Over the last few days, I've been making updates and forecast videos covering the LNU, the SCU, and the CZU Lightning Complex wildfires, and there have been a number of questions that have repeatedly popped up, so I thought I'd just sit down and try to answer these questions for you guys. The four questions that we're going to be diving into are why are CAL FIRE's resources spread so thin right now? How do these wildfires get their names? Why is low humidity a bad thing for wildfire? And how do the fires we're experiencing right now compare historically with fires in the past? So first let's dive into why are CAL FIRE's resources spread so thin right now? And there's really a number of reasons for this, but I believe the biggest one is just the sheer number of fires that they're fighting right now. Looking back, this all started Sunday and Monday when a tropical storm off the coast of Mexico basically just funneled in a bunch of moisture and energy into California, creating thunderstorms which sparked hundreds of lightning fires from Southern California all the way up to the Oregon border. So it pretty much just makes sense that if Cal Fire has to fight hundreds of fires all at the same time, their resources are going to be spread pretty thin. Now the less intuitive explanation behind the thinning of resources can actually be blamed on COVID. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense at first glance, but just give me a second here. In case you didn't know, about one third of CAL FIRE's non-seasonal personnel is actually made up of inmate firefighters. These are usually non-violent offenders who are paid $5 per day plus $1 per hour, and then every day they work, they get two days off of their sentence. And these guys actually make up a huge portion of the crew that is actively digging lines around fires, clearing brush, really some of the activities that are crucial in stopping a wildfire from spreading. And the number of inmate firefighters has gone down significantly since last year for really three big reasons. The first one really comes back to the policy of right when COVID hit, we let a bunch of people out of prison so that they'd be less crowded and there'd be less chance of a COVID outbreak. Now, a lot of the people who got released were nonviolent offenders who are typically the people who serve on these wildfire crews. So it makes sense that if you have less of them in prison, there's going to be less of them to fight the fires. The second reason is a policy to actually not take in any more prisoners. So not only we're letting them out, but we're also not taking any new people in. So both of those reasons are going to explain why the actual number of available inmate firefighters has gone down. Now the third reason actually comes back to the COVID outbreaks that have happened in the prisons and even one in the wildfire training facility for these inmate firefighters. Now I don't believe any of the crews are actively under an outbreak right now, but once they have an outbreak, there's a certain amount of time that has to pass before it's safe to have them go out into a field to fight a fire. Now when it comes down to the exact numbers, it seemed like every source I could find was disagreeing with the last source I read on the exact number of inmate firefighters and what it is actually deployed in the field right now. The best one I could find is last year we had 2,800 inmate firefighters and this year we had about 2,000 available and then I couldn't find out how many of those 2,000 are actually deployed to fires right now. If I figure that out, I'll let you know. So that's really the main reasons Cal Fire's resources are spread so thin right now. Again, the big one though, there's just a lot of fires going on right now. So I'm, I can confidently say though, Cal Fire is doing everything that they possibly can and they are using every resource that they have. Now the second question we're gonna get into is how do these wildfires get their names and what do the acronyms mean? Typically wildfires are named by the dispatcher or the first crew to get to a fire and they'll typically name it after a road or a nearby landmark. So I believe the campfire and the car fire were both roads nearby the ignition point of where those fires started. Now, this case that we're seeing right now is a little bit different because it's not just one fire, we're calling them complexes. And if you don't know, a complex is basically when you have multiple fires all kind of under one jurisdiction. And that's actually how they name the fires. They name it after the unit that is in charge of that complex of fires. For example, I think the 
Napa Sonoma fire right now is actually made up of 20 different fires. So the LNU lightning complex stands for the Lake Napa unit. The SCU stands for the Santa Clara unit and the CZU stands for the Santa Cruz unit. I believe they picked CZU just not to confuse people with the Santa Clara unit. So that's basically how these have been named. Now the next question we're gonna get into is why is low humidity a bad thing for wildfire? Now this was brought up because someone said, well whenever there's high humidity, it seems like it's really hot out, so wouldn't high humidity be bad for wildfires? And this is actually a pretty good point and a valid question. And if you've been watching my update and my forecast videos, in every single one I go into the three wildfire factors that we, wildfire weather factors that we look at when trying to forecast how these events are going to change in the future. Those three factors are temperature, winds, and humidity. Temperature is pretty easy. If it's hot out, fires are gonna be able to spread faster. It's gonna be harder to control the spread. Winds, really crucial for a couple of different reasons. One, it can just spread the fire faster. Two, it can actually pick up burning leaves and branches, throw them, it's called spotting, and then start new little fires that can turn into big fires. So that's why winds are big as well. And then humidity, I realized I hadn't really been doing a good job explaining this in my video, so I'll try better right now. Low humidity is bad for wildfires because it affects the dryness of vegetation. Now before I get too sciencey and you click away, I'll try to make this simple. If it's really dry out, the water is just evaporating out of the grasses, the twigs, the branches, the brush, and that's drying out the plant. There's also less water in the air for the plant to take in. So the plants are basically just getting drier. And this really could make a lot more sense if you think about a campfire. If you have a really wet log and a dry log and you try to start your fire, it's pretty clear which one's gonna be easier to light and then which one's gonna be burning hotter. So that's really the big reason low humidity is a bad thing for wildfire because it dries out the vegetation, which makes fire spread much faster and hotter for that matter. Now the last question, how do these fires compare historically with fires in the past? As of right now, the, unfortunately this is going to change probably by the end of the day, but as of right now, the SCU lightning complex is at 230 thousand acres. This is putting it at the number seven largest wildfire in the history of California. The LNU lightning complex is at about 220,000 acres, putting it at number nine on the largest wildfires in California history list. So that is not what you want to see. And that, that also ties back to why the resources are spread so thin right now. We have two of the top 10 California wildfires of all time burning at the same time. So all we can really hope for is that those numbers stay where, the, stay where they are and Cal Fire can really just tackle this problem and, it, and the fact that it, it'll just be as bad as it gets right now. Thank you for watching and if you have any other questions, please post them in the comments and I'll maybe make another one of these videos trying to answer them.